Hey everyone, it's time for another live look at the astrology. My name is Katie Sweetman and this is your look at the astrology for September 12th through 18th, 2022. So I'm back home. I'm back in New Jersey. I had to go visit my, my dad for a week. Um, I know you all have said really nice things and I really appreciate it. Uh, any prayers can be or, or, or will be accepted. Uh, unfortunately, my dad got a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm going through right now. What are you all going through? Um, it's not easy times, and I feel like I had this conversation with a, a friend of mine, and, and there was sort of this comment like, "It seems like everybody, at least she knows, or maybe I know, I don't know what you." We're going through some big level stuff and I'm a Scorpio at the end of the day so I sort of take it all as life because life does include sometimes the not so pleasant things but uh, I do appreciate all your kind thoughts your prayers um, just uh, I'm just riding the train that's the only way I can describe it and see where things are going um, but it is good to be back home to be good back you know back to my set up in my desk um, and uh, navigating Virgo season. You know, here we are, we're in that last 10-day uh, stretch of Virgo season, the last, the final third of Virgo season. You know, now that there's so much going on in the uh, fixed signs and even the cardinal signs a little bit, it just seems like everything's bunching up in the fixed signs these days, which means it's taking some of the pressure off of the mutable signs. I know you all, uh, you know, my mutable signs are my my Geminis, my Virgos, my Sagittariuses, and my Pisces can use it. Um, because last year and in 2020, we had the eclipses in the mutable signs in the, uh, Gemini and Sagittarius. But now the eclipses or what the eclipses have been and will be in the fixed signs. So October and November will be very interesting. Um, but that's uh, that's that's future stuff for all, us all to to deal with. But um Let's check in. How are you doing? We had that Pisces full moon um, on Saturday. What was that? That was the the uh, the tenth of September. That Pisces full moon brought us to the end of the zodiac, and Virgo season, as much as it is about dealing with the uh, the details of life, the duties and responsibilities, the plans, the systems all the things that we have to to do in order to make sure our human lives run smoothly pisces is this gentle nudge to remind us that there is a world beyond this world that there is a time for for earthly concerns and a, and a time for spiritual concerns we have to find the balance and um, that's the thing about astrology is that we sometimes focus on one sign but they are part of a polarity and Virgo is a polarity with Pisces and um, you know Virgo it's like it can't be so earthly that we lose the magic it can't be so magical with the Pisces that we lose our grounding so how do we find how do we find the midpoint and Virgo and Pisces are the helping and healing signs these are two signs that are very driven to help to serve Virgo are the, you're my nurses, you're my doctors, my physicians, my herbalists, my witches, um, and these signs that really kind of draw upon two different forms of healing and magic in order to, to do their work, to do their craft. And that's another word that we can associate with Virgo season, it's craft, it's the attention to details, it's all the teeny tiny, I always think of Virgo season with like the, the tiny stitches that you see in something that's been handmade and sort of that artisan quality. So there's a sense of, of, let's say, purity and perfection with Virgo season, but there's another way we can look at it, which is refinement. And how do we refine our lives right now? And, and it's no coincidence, and I realize, you know, I say this over and over again, that uh, astrology is Northern Hemisphere biased, um, but this is no coincidence that this is the season that we harvest we gather the wheat we we make the wine we you know we gather the grapes we make the wine we prepare because we're sort of dealing with our earthly concerns right now we, we prepare our food our medicine our lives for the coming darker days of winter so it's it's time to prepare and to organize and and for some of us maybe even catch our breath because we had a lot of 
bumpy astrology in August. That's because everything was sort of bunching up in the sign of Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, um, and Aquarius as well. So we've got, you know, this time to sort of sort and organize and, and maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a strong metaphor, but after the storm, after the hurricane, so to speak, we got to like check everything, make sure everything's okay. So we can go into the next season, go into, let's say, eclipse season as we get into October and November and, and be in a good place with it. And, you know, eclipse season just means that the narrative is shifting and changing. The eclipses that are coming up, they are not standalone. They're part of a story that we are already familiar with, a story that we've come to uh, November of 2021 or April and May of 2022. So we just had that Pisces full moon. It was sort of this time for us to tend to our emotions, our spirit, to think about the things that are truly of value and to nourish our soul. But um, let's, uh, before we jump into the rest of this week's astrology, I'll just reintroduce myself. It's uh, good to, to see some familiar faces on the live chat. My name is Katie Sweetman. I am a psychic and an astrologer here in the New York City area. And every week we gather live, except for last week I did it recorded. Um, Mercury retrograde, uh, we gather live to look at the astrology. Yeah, I'm also a psychic medium. Um, I you know this is a good segue. I did a an interview with Delissa Hawking of Spirit and Spark. We did an, I, an Instagram live uh, last week. I actually had a really interesting chat. You know, she works a little bit differently than I do. I'm not I'm not working with people who have passed on per se, although sometimes they. They barge in, but uh, I am working with guides. I am working with the level of your soul. Uh, that's a form of psychic mediumship. She, on the other hand, works mostly with people who have passed on. So we sort of traded shop shop secrets or you know stories, um, and uh, we're both well. Rather, she is organizing a summit that begins on September nineteenth called. Uh, planets and predictions. It's your first look at uh, what can we expect for 2023. And somebody asked me like, well, how does this work? Well, it's free and you can sign up for it. And uh, every day there's a featured speaker um, or maybe even featured two speakers. I'm one of the featured speakers and her and I, we did a talk about the astrology of 2023. We've got some big planetary shifts and in, in particularly March of 2023. You've heard me allude to this. We have Saturn switches signs. It goes into Pisces on March 4th. Pluto makes its first dip into Aquarius since the 1780s and 1790s. That's on March 23rd. And then Mars, after seven months, finally gets out of Gemini. And that's be a breath of fresh air for those who are Mars ruled, um, my Aries and my Scorpios. And that's on March 25th. But, you know, we, we're sort of seeing a lot of highlights in the astrology of the final signs of the Zodiac, Aquarius and Pisces. And we sort of got a taste of this with the Pisces full moon on Saturday, September 10th, where when you get to Aquarius, Aquarius is the second to last sign, it's, but it's the last uh, air sign. It's about our world, our world, our humanity, the collective, our social circle, our communities, these sort of broader systems and networks that we're all a part of, even though sometimes we feel a little bit disconnected. And then what's beyond that? And, and Pisces is this sign as the last water sign that talks about the energies of the world beyond this world. Pisces is the bridge between this side and the next side. It sort of stands in for the things that we can't see. And whether it's our dreams, whether it's our intuition, our illusions, our blind spots, but it's also our spirituality. So we're having you know, these bigger themes that are present on a collective level. And I talk more about this in my interview, which of course you can get it for free. You can sign up. Uh, the link is in the show notes. It's Planet and Predictions. Um, da, 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 da. I think I was like, yeah, I think it's only in the show notes. Um, and I'm trying to think it's on my website, but I'll have to go back and check that. Um, and that starts on September 19th, Monday, September 19th, and runs daily until September 30th. 
also happening uh, this week, or well, a couple days before, I'm starting my Saturn Masterclass, and I know you all have heard me talk a lot about it, because I'm actually really excited about it, because I get to take something that I, uh, or a facet of astrology that I really love, which is Saturn. Because Saturn talks about the lessons of life. It gives you the blueprint. Why wouldn't you want to know the blueprint? It doesn't mean that you don't have agency or you don't fill things in. You don't grow and learn and evolve through your astrology. But what we're going to be doing over a 12-week journey is a journey is doing step-by-step step using the zodiac as this, uh, this, this sort of place to unlock archetypes within us and it's through this sort of natural order of the zodiac that we have the beginning of the journey through aries and we come to the end of the journey symbolically through pisces this is not a it's not a class about saturn through the science this is this is work this is a transmission this is an internal work this is also sharing this is also a group environment we got a you know pretty good group started already i know some people have said that they are also interested um, but you can also s learn more about my saturn masterclass. Um, it's the links in the show notes the links on my website empoweringastrology.com it meets weekly you get the recorded videos in theory you could do it um, not uh, live but of course it's a very different experience if you do and it's meant to motivate you and push you and to make you aware what is the blueprint that is in your chart? What is sort of this natural progressive structure that's in the zodiac that helps you to unlock the deeper wisdom of life? And this is uh, something that I've been learning myself over the last decade plus. And with Saturn, I have Saturn in the ninth that just seems um, to, you know, this is what I'm here to do is to teach you all about astrology, teach you all about these deeper esoteric secrets. Um, so yeah. Go check it out. My Saturn Masterclass. It begins Saturday morning. I know it's gonna be a little bit bright and early for my Pacific, uh, my my Pacific Standard Time people. Um, you can go to my website, empoweringastrology.com, to learn more, or you can email me if you have questions. Empoweringastrology at gmail.com. So, oh, the backtrack. The interview that I did with Delissa Hawking of Spirit and Spark, I put the link in the show notes. It's, it goes to Instagram Live, so it does help to have Instagram, but I suppose you could watch it on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on your browser. Anyway, let's talk about the astrology of this week, September 12th through 18th, 2022. So it's a little bit of a quiet week. And I mean that because it doesn't have sort of the bigger aspects that we've been navigating lately. And perhaps that's a good thing. Again, use this time to plan, to sort. I know Mercury is retrograde. That's something that I spoke a little bit more in depth with. It was not last week. It was the week before. I don't know. That last, um, that last video I did was a little bit of a blur because I was kept having like technical issues. Anyway. So this week is mostly driven by the aspects of the moon. And as we start the week, the moon has moved into Aries. It's sort of rounding out its time in Aries. And this is after we have the Pisces full moon. Pisces is the last sign. Aries is the first sign. So we're sort of getting this energy to start, to take action, to move forward as we go into the week. But here's sort of the tiny type clause with the astrology this week. Mercury's retrograde. As I've said in the past, Mercury retrograde doesn't mean that we have to grind our lives to a halt. We just have to understand it is a change in a phase of energy. It means that we have to intuit instead of analyze. We have to reflect instead of like instinctually react. I remember this conversation I once had with somebody, uh, he, English was not his native language, he was Greek, but I remember he, he would say to me, like, because I kept saying, like, well, how, he would say, like, what do you feel? And I would say, I think, I think. And he's like, no think, just feel. And maybe this is a, a Mercury retrograde for us to think, feel, sorry, feel, I'm missing my point feel instead of think and so how do we feel our way forward instead of really overly using our uh, our analytical mind look the analytical mind is a beautiful thing but i can't tell you how many conversations i've had with clients maybe you are watching uh the replay or watching live right now because i know a bunch of you are my clients where 
the message that comes from spirit is just because it makes sense on paper doesn't mean it makes sense for you. Sometimes analytically, it totally makes sense. Of course you would go this direction, but how does it feel? Does it feel right? And when you check in with the feeling in the body, sometimes it doesn't feel right. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. There's, there's a feeling that is unmistakable. And I don't mean anxiety or fear. It's like, you know that this is going against something, or maybe it's just, it's not gonna take you where your heart wants. And that's the thing, like, you know, head, heart, head, heart. Mercury retrograde pulls us into the duality of life. All retrogrades do. And as I said last week, all planets, except for the sun and the moon, turn retrograde. Mercury just does it the most frequently. They were not freaking out in olden days about Mercury retrogrades. This is mostly a, a cultural phenomenon that, I don't know, maybe a bit longer. It just seems like it's sort of like now, within the last 10 years, because of the internet, everybody is talking about Mercury retrograde a lot more. But do, 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 do your due diligence. It's not to say that things aren't screwy, technology doesn't get weird, um, but this could be a time when things turn up. You, you see something from a perspective that you haven't thought before. So this week, as the moon moves from Aries, it goes into Taurus, I believe, to, yeah, tomorrow, uh, September 13th spends a few days in Taurus. Taurus is the, the, the sign that we are seeing a lot of uh, activity in as we go into October and November. So the moon is sort of picking up on this larger story about value and worth, stability and security. What is your relationship with stability and security in your life? Where are you planted? Where are you rooted? South nodes in Scorpio. What are the deeper emotions and feelings and fears? What's the that dark heart of yourself that we all have that you have to face in order to move forward, in order to become more stable and secure? But this is a, a moon, moon in Taurus. Uh, Taurus is an earth sign. Virgo is an earth sign. So we're really getting into that earthy side of things in the latter part of this week. Practical details, simple luxuries, really dealing with our human life, health, wellness, the body, but enjoying life. And, and that's sort of my philosophy, you know, maybe, you know, I, I focus on sometimes frivolous things in my, in my, in my day life, my not astrology life, but uh, life is short. Um, I, I do a really serious job, but we have to sort of balance out the work and the service and the you know all that deep stuff that we do with the fun the play we need to make sure that we are, are nourished so the Taurus moon is saying like do things that nourish you that feel good that taste good that foster a sense of stability and security and even fertility in your life but Venus is in Virgo so it's not that sort of indulgent pleasure that we normally would, would see with a Taurus moon, you know, Venus and Virgo is a little bit more practical minded, practically motivated. So we're sort of balancing out the two. But as we go into this weekend, the moon's in Gemini. And Gemini, it's, it's, it's the, it's Virgo's 10th sign. So this is a time as we come to the last quarter moon to really think about our duties and responsibilities, our direction in life. Mars is in Gemini. We've had this you know, Mars is going to be, you've heard me say this, but Mars is going to be in Gemini for seven months. It's a long time for Mars to be in Gemini. Normally it's five, six weeks. So we're using this Mars energy to really go after what we want. But again, we can't be impulsive. We have to be deliberate. We have to be focused. That's sort of this sheen as we go into the weekend. Um, we're going to have Venus square Mars on September 16th. Um, normally Venus and Mars gets a little bit of a flirtatious or sexy reputation. Maybe in, in this case, but the thing is that Venus is in Virgo, Mars is in Gemini, and it's more focused on us ne negotiating and navigating our needs versus the needs of others and how do we help other people, but at the same time help ourselves. Um, and then we have Mars making a sextile, sextiles are pretty quiet, to Chiron. And Mars is in Gemini, Chiron's in Aries. So this could mean it's a weekend to tend to old hurts, to have the bravery and courage and motivation 
to go after the things that we want. And maybe, you know, some, that's the thing with Chiron and Aries, and I said this to a client uh, a few days ago, it, you, sometimes we have to go, go for the hard stuff. We have to do the scary thing because it's doing the scary thing or going after the hard stuff that really creates this bigger alchemy of change and transformation and even healing. That's the thing about Chiron and Aries is that sometimes we have to take the things that have made us suffer the most and use it like medicine to help other people. And with Chiron and Aries, we have to have bravery and courage, but you know, that's not always so easy to have bravery and courage. Finally, the sun shines Pluto. And the sun is in Virgo, and it sort of round out its time in Pluto. Uh, in uh, sorry, ran out its time in Virgo. Pluto's in Capricorn. Um, Pluto's starting to get to the end of Capricorn. It's sort of hanging out around 28 degrees by March of next year. It's going to do that first dip into Aquarius. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So. Sun trying Pluto is typically we have an opportunity, we have the support to transform, to reform. I will say that you know the sun and Virgo, Virgo can be a little bit obsessive about purity and details, perfection. Pluto sort of adds to that. So maybe this is a great weekend for projects, for working on ourselves. Um, and uh, getting things ready and organized for the next season, which is Libra season, which starts next week. So that is your look at the astrology of this week. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the astrology for each of the 12 signs and to see where this week is unfolding. Aries. So Aries, your planet Mars continues to be in Gemini. I know I was saying this earlier, but your planet's going to be hanging out in one sign for seven months. That's, that's a long time. Normally it's five, six weeks. As a result, this is a bit of a busy time for you, Aries. Maybe you have a lot of things to do, a lot of places to go, a lot of conversations to have. Maybe you're weighing your options. Maybe there's a little bit of a slightly frenetic energy to this time. Um, it probably is not going to slow down until... November, so it's sort of full steam ahead at the moment. But right now you have a lot to say, and that's the thing. Watch what you're saying, watch what you're choosing, watch what you're thinking. It's not that it's bad, of course not, but there's a need to sort of have presence and, and consciousness and, and, and awareness and, and even self-reflection in the things that you're saying, thinking, and and, and choosing at this time. Because when Mer, Mer, Mers, Mars turns retrograde uh, later uh, on, on Halloween, uh, October 31st, you know, you're going to spend you know November, December, and the first two weeks of January walking back and reviewing that time. So it might be uh, a lot of energy right now, but you will be pushing back as you go into the end of this year. Again, it's still Virgo season, so this is a time for you to really tend to the duties and details and the responsibilities, the daily responsibilities that we all have, to take care of the rituals, to put things into order, to take care of health and wellness. But the sun in Virgo and Mars and Gemini just makes for a little bit of a fast-paced energy for you. Uh, Mercury is retrograde in your relationship sign, so you may be dealing with something on a relationship level, all relationships, uh, not just romantic relationships, having to have conversations, having to look at things from a different perspective, maybe even somebody from the past showing up. Taurus, your planet is Venus and presently it's in Virgo. So Virgo for you, uh, Taurus, is your fifth sign. And so you're sort of in this period that takes you into, I believe it's the end of September, where it's about you being you. Like, what's your passion, Taurus? Uh, what, what feeds you? What lights you up? What gives you joy? What gives you pleasure? Venus is in Virgo. It's not typically a sign that we associate with passion and joy with pleasure, but that's a thing about being an earth sign, Virgo, not Virgo, Taurus. Um, so this is, you know, what are the earthly things that really feeds you? And maybe it is, you know, food, food and being fat and making a little bit of a Taurus joke. I mean, find me a Taurus that doesn't like food and it's no, nobody. Um, but anyway, but this is a time for you to kind of get back to the things that sustain you. And maybe that means getting things organized and planned and, and ready for whatever the next thing is. 
And and I sort of alluded to this in, in my introduction, uh, Taurus, but you, you're, oh, I can't speak English. So there are eclipses, there have been eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio. Scorpio is your relationship sign. There will be eclipses in October, November, October 25th. This is a solar eclipse in your relationship sign. And then on November 8th, there's a lunar eclipse in your sign. Taurus. So maybe you're, you're sort of getting prepared and sort of sustaining yourself because eclipses, they sort of mark a change in the story. The curtain goes down on one act, the curtain comes up on another. And that can just be a lot of emotion, a lot of energy. So make sure you're taking care of yourself right now. Gemini. So Gemini, you got a lot of things going on right now. You've got Mars in your sign. Um, it's going to be in Gemini, God help us, until uh, March 25th of 2023. Gemini is the third sign of the zodiac. It's the first air sign. It talks about that raw state of experiencing our environment, taking things in, learning, thinking, trying everything. That's the beautiful thing about Gemini is that it's relentlessly curious. Hey, I'm not picking on Gemini. I have a Gemini moon. Um, but that Mars energy really pushes it. It pushes buttons. It sort of gives you drive and motivation. And maybe you've got a lot of ideas, a lot of places you want to go. Maybe it's a little bit frenetic at the moment. Um, but this is an energy that's really pushing you forward. And, and Gemini and Gemini rising, typically, these are signs that have a lot to say. So my only caution is you might be a little bit you know, quick to say things. I know Mercury is retrograde, so maybe that's a little bit that the, the dance that you have to do right now, especially with Mercury and Libra. Don't forget to negotiate. Don't forget to consider other viewpoints, other people's feelings. Um, and uh, it doesn't mean that yours are not valid, but that's sort of the back and forth that you're having to do right now, Gemini. With your planet retrograde, uh, this happens every few months, so it's something that you are well uh, used to at this point. Um, Mercury retrograde means it's more about reflection than instead of action. Going back within instead of pushing outward. It's the yin to that normal forward yang energy. So you have to sort of wait until, I believe it's the 2nd of October, until Mercury is direct. And so this is a time for you to get back to the things that actually make you feel alive, give you joy, give you pleasure, give you passion. It could be an intensely creative sign, especially with Mars in your sign. Um, but Virgo season for you is a time for you to tend to home and family, to take care of your roots, the past, your your household. You just have that full moon in your career sign, which sort of put the spotlight on your professional life and making some changes in your professional life. Cancer. Cancer. So maybe you just needed to kind of catch your breath a little bit. You've heard me say this week in and week out, it's just been a little bit of a heavier time emotionally. And you can kind of keep crossing off the days as Saturn prepares to come to the end of its time in your eighth sign. I've talked about this in the past. It's sort of you just have had to do a lot of deep emotional work since 2020. And Saturn, you know, and this is sort of to put in the back of your head for October, Saturn will turn direct on October 23rd. And so that's sort of that last point in the story of building and constructing deeper emotional reliance, uh, a deeper sense of intimacy and vulnerability, and even intimacy and vulnerability with yourself. But October could be a time when you're sort of synthesizing a lot of the deeper lessons that you've been working on since 2020. But Saturn leaves your eighth on March 4th of 2023. So we're in, we're in the home stretch, Cancer. Virgo season for you, as I said probably last week and the week before, is a time for you to focus on the mind, your ideas, information, writing, speaking, learning, traveling, move, moving. It's a very curious uh, and, and, and restless time for you. And with that full moon that we just had, that has been so much about your truth, your convictions. Uh, what do you stand for? What do you, what do you believe in? Um, and sort of what are the, the opinions that you, that you hold right now? 
Um, you know, Mercury retrograde for you, um, Mercury is in your fourth sign of home and family. So maybe you're having to walk back on something about your home life, your, your family, your parents, your household, uh, the people you share your living space with. Even old emotions, old memories, stuff in the past and ancestors. Uh, Mercury will dip back into Virgo, but for right now, there's a need to go back and to uh, look at things from a new perspective in your home environment, Cancer. Leo, um, lots, you know, like you've heard me here week in and week out, the fixed signs are not, not so fixed at the moment. Um, a lot of that energy has been concentrated on career, direction, sort of that role that you play in the world. And I realize every Leo, Leo rising is different. I've just, you know, a lot of you, I mean, some of you are my clients, where you have gotten uh, new jobs or you have made 180s in your professional life, or you're contemplating a different way of doing things in your professional life. Uh, but that said, Virgo season for you has been a time for you to sort of focus on the things that really matter the things on let's say material level there's nothing wrong with that we are material beings we need to take care of our material lives so virgo season has been a time for you to think about what do you need what are the resources you have sort of getting organized sort of focusing on the things that you invest your money in the things you buy even the things that you gather um, and that sort of sense of maybe even making investments in yourself and looking at deeper themes about self-worth. Mm -hmm. That full moon on the, you know, that we just had really put on the spotlight some deeper emotional material. So maybe it was a little bit of a heavy emotional weekend. Um, but that said, Mercury is retrograde in your third sign. So there's sort of this time where you need to sort of be present with what you're thinking, what you're saying, what you're doing, what you're choosing, because there's a time when Mercury will walk you back uh, to revisit something from the past and to see things from a new perspective. Venus, which is one of your major planets, um, Venus is making a square to Mars this week. Squares aren't bad, but it's creating friction and it may be creating friction between your home life but also your do, 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 also your professional life if I'm making that sorry I can't do math quickly yes your professional life and your home life um, but that said uh, there's a lot of things going on use this time Leo to get organized get sorted and to prepare for the next shift in the story when we get into October Virgo. Happy birthday, Virgo. I know that we are at that last, uh, as we say in astrology speak, uh, de decan, decan, like it's one of those words, like decan or decan. Um, it's that last 10 degrees of the sign. It's called a decant, decant. Um, but anyway, so we're in that last uh, stretch. So if, if your birthday is, is going on right now, happy birthday. And uh, it's sort of, this is a time when you just had a full moon. Maybe things are a bit illuminated in your life. You know, this time to focus on relationships and connections. Uh, if you are in that, if you're born in that last um, five degrees, five days, of the sign it's very much about neptune now and needing to that's the thing about virgo it's a sign that's really great at rationalizing things and organizing things and really dealing with the tangibility of life but if, if you've got this neptune opposition it's sort of like you're having to find the balance between the things that you can't touch and how do you learn to let go how do you learn to go with the flow and that's the thing with virgo is sometimes it's a little bit harder to go with the flow because they've already have it all they already have the flow mapped out um but that's the thing about neptune is that sometimes um, it's something that we couldn't even prepare for we have to learn to open up ourselves to something beyond this world Mercury is your planet. It's presently retrograde in your second sign of money and income. So there's this deeper story about value and worth that's happening at this point. Maybe it's literally value and worth. You're looking at investments. You're looking at the things that you spend your money on, the things that you own. Is it worth it? Maybe it's self-worth. Am I worth it? Of course you are, Virgo. Um, but this is a time when Mercury, as it sort of walks its way back throughout the, the rest of September, it's just reflection instead of action. 
Mercury will turn direct at 24 degrees of Virgo. This will be October 2nd. Um, so you've got a little bit of time uh, to sort of navigate and to negotiate things. Um, then what else we got for, for Virgo? You know, we just had that full moon, as I was saying. Um, it's, it's like this is the week where also Mercury is making the second opposition to Jupiter. It already made its first, but now that it's retrograde, it's making its second. There is a deeper theme that's present right now for Virgo, which is, it's either literally about education, um, and, and I say that more in a mundane uh, way, or it's about these sort of larger, broader themes about truth and faith and conviction. And what do you believe in? What do you stand for? What's your truth? And uh, I think with the opposition, oppositions aren't bad. Sometimes people think that it's literally two opposing um, viewpoints. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's sort of that really, um, like that full moon energy where something is really uh, highlighted or loud, or there's just a, more of an intense energy. And I think with Mercury and Jupiter, this is ability to think and communicate Mercury, but Jupiter is this planet that opens up our eyes to the world. It makes us aware of things that are larger than us, whether it's higher education, philosophy, faith, truth, foreign travel, journeys, exploration, spirituality. So this is sort of bigger existential time for you, Virgo. And with that in mind, um, what what are you discovering about yourself this week? Libra. So presently you have Mercury retrograde in your sign. Um, there's a big focus on the choices that you're making, the actions that you're taking, the ideas and information, and maybe even the conversations that you're having. And, Mercury retrograde in your sign means that it can't be impulsive. You just can't react. You have to sort of t be reflective or be present with the things that you're saying and choosing the directions that you're heading in, but it might be a little bit of a restless time for you. Libra, maybe one of the reasons why it's a restless time, Libra, is because your planet, Venus, is in Virgo. Virgo represents the end of your personal zodiac calendar. It sort of represents the end and when you get to the end of something there is a need to let go of the old story to prepare um, you know when uh, Venus is in the 12th it needs to recuperate it needs to rest and so maybe you don't have a ton of energy right now Libra and maybe that's necessary we can't always go full throttle all the time but there's this story that's happening between you and either your intuition your dreams maybe your dreams are more vivid or maybe even your spiritual you, your 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 universal you. That's the thing. There's there's a you like the name that's on your on your documents. Um, but there's you, the the essence of you, the you that lives beyond this physical body, the you that will leave this physical body and and go someplace else. Um, and that's the part of you that cannot be destroyed. It's uh, it's immortal. But this physical body is obviously very mortal. So you have to tend to your physical needs right now, your physical body, but also tend to your spiritual needs at this time. And what sort of things are you discovering in this more intuitive time? Are you having flashes of awareness? Are you having, again, these dreams that sort of foretell things or show you things differently? Um, but listen to your listen to your intuition at this time. Um, and maybe that's where Mercury retrograde is. It's like you want to lead with Mercury because Mercury's in your sign. But this has to not be an analytical, strategic Mercury. This has to be an intuitive Mercury. And the thing is, is that the 12th is where we, we feel, we can feel, if we're lucky, our spiritual truth. The truth that it doesn't make sense on paper. It doesn't even make sense at a human level but it makes sense on a, on a soul level so again tend to your soul tend to your body tend to all the little details right now and when venus uh, i think it's at the end of this month does go into libra that's sort of this rebirth and new, a new beginning venus your planet is making a square to mars uh this week so it's a little bit of friction um with relationships not as not bad friction um but there is these 
the, the friction points may be existential. The friction points may be in what do you believe in and, and maybe what other some, what somebody else believes in. How do you find commonality? And maybe some of the things that you're discovering intuitively are not lining up with somebody else. So it's like, how do you release? How do you detach? How do you negotiate? So there you go, Libra. Scorpio. So just quick check in on Scorpio. Mars is your planet and Mars is going to be spending a lot of time in Gemini. Gemini is your eighth sign. Hey, Scorpio, you are the eighth sign. Is there a correlation? Absolutely. So the eighth sign of the zodiac and you are the eighth sign. It's like Scorpio. It's like you have to go into the shadow, the underworld. You're like, wait a second. This is what you do, Scorpio. This is the this is your sign is that you teach people, hopefully in, in, in the highest expression of this energy, teach people that there's two sides to life. There's light and there's dark. There is consciousness, there's unconsciousness, there's something, you know, constructive power that Scorpio can can wield, or there's destructive power that Scorpio can wield. But that's the thing about a Scorpio is that its twelfth sign is Libra. And Scorpio really has to work to find the balance between these dualities of life. So here comes Mars. And Mars is really poking at these deeper themes. And it will poke on these deeper themes until January 12th of 2023. So there's this theme about what's what's hidden within, what's hidden within you, what's hidden within others, what's sort of the secrets, what's the shadows. Uh, I know it sounds very dramatic, but you know, you're Scorpio, it's what you do. And intimacy, vulnerability, sex, power, control, the things that we don't typically talk about in polite company. So all this stuff is a bit fair game at the moment. And it's really pushing you in that scorpionic way to transform. But it is an emotional space for you to occupy. And sort of my joke about the eighth, especially with clients who have a lot of planets in the eighth, it's like, Nobody's supposed to live in hell. So why are you getting your mail forwarded there? So Scorpio, just keep in mind that this is a temporary time. You you got this. You, you, you're you like literally the sign that's built for this. But it does mean that you're doing that really intense emotional work into the new year. I'm so sorry. Um, but just you know, remember to take care of yourself. Remember not to get your mail forwarded to the 8th. Just, um, you know, just tell people... You'll be away. Have a have a neighbor get your mail, um, but do constructive, positive things with this time. Um, do the transformation work. Do the release. Um, take care of the the deeper emotions. Really open up your vulnerability and intimacy. I mean, after all, Scorpio, this is a time that is about relationships and other people, and you're going to have a Scorpio new moon on a solar eclipse new moon on October 25th that's going to point to your eighth. So you're really entering a six-month phase of life that takes you into next spring, well, next year, sorry, Southern, uh, sorry, Australia and Southern Hemisphere, um, where it is about um, this really deep, emotional, powerful work and transformation. Sagittarius. So Sag, your planet as Jupiter continues to be in Aries, really use this time, especially till the end of October, while Jupiter is in Aries, to do the things you love, the things that give you life, the things that give you passion. It's a creative time for you, Sag, a uh, time for you to really express who you are. Virgo season, on the other hand, I think I talked about this last week or the week before, it's about your professional life. It's the duties and responsibilities that you carry out in the world. It's about new beginnings in your professional life, maybe uh, getting a new job, maybe getting recognized for something. But that said, like whatever you're doing in the world, make sure that it's really coming from a place of joy and passion as, as much as you can, Sagittarius. Mercury, which is a major player in your astrology, it is a career planet and it is a relationship planet. Mercury is retrograde and it's retrograde in Libra <clears throat> and Sag Libra is your signs of friends, community, your social circle, but it's also these larger social themes, social issues, social causes, and also these bigger themes of equity and justice. 
And with Mercury retrograde, if there's something that you're walking back on with a friend or in your community, uh, maybe you are seeing a relationship from a different perspective, maybe there's a need to negotiate, Libra, um, and try to find commonality, Libra. Um, and with um, Venus also, Venus, uh, Mercury is your career planet. If something is a little unfinished or unsettled, it may take until um, the beginning of October to sort of see either a resolution or to see another uh, aspect of the story. Um, but for right now, it's about reevaluating your future, looking ahead and maybe looking ahead in a different way. Mercury and Jupiter do make an opposition this week. It's these sort of larger philosophical existential themes that you're so good at, Sagittarius. Um, and maybe this is a time for you to really share what you know. Um, Mercury is retrograde, so you're sort of doing it in a way that's more reflective and more intuitive than sort of just like shooting your mouth off. But I'm sure, I'm sure you got this, Sagittarius. Capricorn. Capricorn, again, Saturn continues to be in your second sign of money and income, value and worth. It'll be there until March 4th of 2023. And then starting March of 2023, you go into a new three-year chapter. So that said, especially as you get into October and you get into Saturn Direct on October 23rd, you're sort of still in that time of reflection going within instead of action. Saturn spends five months out of the year retrograde, no big deal. It is the yin to Saturn directs yang time. But this is a need for you to go back and see uh, value and worth from different perspectives, to see money and investment and income from a different perspective. And then maybe in October, especially when Mercury is direct, Saturn direct, eclipses, then it's time to take action. That said, uh, Capricorn, uh, Virgo season for you, it's so much about the sort of the vision that you have for your life, the sort of the world, what you believe in, what you stand for, what's your truth, what's your convictions. Maybe it's a time for you to travel right now. You know, Mercury retrograde, it's, you know, especially because it does talk about these themes about work and health and service to other people, but also these beliefs that you, that you carry. Like, how do you see things from a different perspective? perspective. Um, but we're on the cusp of Libra season and Libra season starting next week, I think it's the 22nd, um, that will put the spotlight on your professional life going forward into the end of October. Yeah. Aquarius. Aquarius, so you're one of my fixed signs, you know, you've been hearing me say this week in and week out, the fixed signs are not so fixed at the moment. And I think that's one of the hardest things. Here's a little bit of a, we'll say, a preparation for October. So back in 2021, we had something called Saturn square Uranus. And Saturn square Uranus was a bit of an intense energy. It kind of felt like we had one foot in a new life, one foot in an old life. And I know for a lot of Aquariuses and even my Capricorns, 2021 had a lot of ups and downs and changes. And if that's not the case for you, great, fantastic. Um, in 2021, we had three squares. The last one was in December of 2021. In 2022, we do not have any more exact squares, but Saturn and Uranus will get very close to each other in October when Saturn turns direct um, on October 23rd. October is probably going to be a pivotal month for you. What that means, I'm not sure. Everybody's different. But this has been a time about new beginnings, Aquarius, and, and sometimes sobering new beginnings and sometimes new beginnings that have required a lot of responsibility on your end. A lot of the inflection and change in your life have happened in the home environment. And there's going to be an eclipse um, on October 25th. That's in your career sign of Scorpio, but there will be a lunar eclipse in your uh, home environment um, on November 8th. So you're sort of gearing up and building up and we're getting very close. I know those, that those dates seem a little bit far away, but we're getting very close um, to those, those dates, especially as we get into Libra season, sort of on the cusp of eclipse season, where maybe there's some sort of change in the household, change in your living situation. Maybe it's something innocuous. Maybe there's a big move. Maybe you've already made the big move, but there's sort of this bigger need to 
put down roots, to make changes in your home environment, and to sort of answer these deeper existential questions. Where is home and who is home? Um, but that said, the there is a little bit of a friction point this week with Venus square Mars. It's not a difficulty. It's just sort of there's this push and pull between the home environment and your, your, your internal world and your external world, your professional world. And how do you make sure everything is stable and secure? How do you make sure that you are getting your emotional needs met at the same time? tending to your professional life but it's a little bit of a intense time Aquarius make sure you are taking care of yourself finally Pisces we just had that Pisces full moon in your sign that put you in the spotlight Pisces and so you get a Pisces full moon about this time each year it's just the complement to Virgo season and Virgo is your relationship sign so how did you feel around this full moon? Did, were you in the spotlight? Did you feel a push? With Jupiter, your planet, and your money sign of Aries, this is about financial new beginnings or new investments or new ways of earning a living or maybe sort of on a, not a physical level, maybe it's more about what you believe in or what your truth is um, and even what you value and even your own value and worth but there's this time of new beginnings a time for you to focus on your material life that said virgo season continues to be a time about relationship not just romantic relationship but all relationships it's sort of this is the season that reminds you that you can't do life alone it's it's time you know to share the load to find balance but the thing about pisces is that it has such a big heart and wants to do everything for everybody but there has to be equity, not like trans transactional equity, but there has to be balance. It has to have to naturally have that flow. So use this season to put things back into balance. Mercury, which is a big player in your astrology, it's your sign of home and family. It's also a relationship sign. It is retrograde right now, and it's picking up on these deeper themes about intimacy, vulnerability, uh, trust, control, um, that's so sort of the deeper stuff that happens between two people, secrets, revelations, but also the deeper emotional work that needs to happen so that you can open up to somebody. It's a little bit of a heavier emotional time at this time. I think there, you know, especially with Mercury goes back to Virgo. Um, I forget when I can even get the date in my head. Uh, Mercury will go back to Virgo and it will put this spotlight on relationships again. So maybe you're navigating somebody, some. Maybe you're navigating something with somebody that has to do with deeper emotional material right now. And then Mercury direct on October 2nd at 24 degrees of Virgo gives you that resolution and need to move forward. So that is your look at the astrology of September 18th through, no, September 12th through 18th. I knew I had it wrong. <laughs> Mercury is retrograde, 12th through 18th, 2022. My name is Katie Sweeven. This has been your live look at the astrology, or maybe you're watching on the replay. You can watch this on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram. Um, sign up for my newsletter. I'm always giving you um, your first look at the astrology of the week early on Monday mornings. Um, also learning about events. You've heard me talk a lot about this uh, Saturn Masterclass, this three-month 12-week program, this group program that I'm doing to lead you through the deeper material of the Zodiac, which is the Wheel of Life, but also to get you in alignment with your own personal blueprint. You can find the details in the show notes, um, Saturn Masterclass. You can Google it on my website, empoweringastrology.com. I'm also doing a free summit, the Planets and Predictions Summit, which you can sign up um, in the show notes. That's where you get uh, uh, featured speakers once a day. Um, it's all virtual. It's not timed, but there is that sense of releasing something every week. So thank you all for, for joining me um, for another live look at the astrology. Like I said, it's very good to be back home um, and to be back in, in, in my space. Um, but I wish you all a great week and we will talk next week. Take care. Bye.